Ohio State goes to Maryland. Maryland looked like they were a pretty good team. Penn State really stomped them last week. They've gone two consecutive weeks now against Wisconsin and Penn State against good defenses and couldn't do anything. So we'll see what the Buckeyes can do. But they've got their own issues. If anybody there up in Michigan has noticed, keeping running no. backs healthy. We, we, I, we've, nobody's been watching. Nobody's been paying attention at all. So that's, that's uh, Ohio State's concern is – you know, they wanted to be more of a bully team this year, maybe not to Michigan's extent, but they wanted to be able to be versatile. And they'd accomplished that to a certain extent until you know, Iowa, Penn State gave them problems. And now it's it's more like, let's see if they can keep two running backs healthy because they had to go to the third string guy, Dallin Hayden, who is no slouch, but he's a freshman. You can't rely on him in a huge, enormous game. Uh, he hasn't been on the field, but he ran for 100 yards against Indiana. But uh, that's the Ohio State struggle right now. So I, I think we might have talked about this last week after watching them against Northwestern, too. But, you know, I, I think to me, obviously losing, you know, or struggling with having those two guys on the field is is huge. They're They're incredibly talented. There's no doubt about that. What I would say is, you know, what – when I look at mid, or Ohio State's talent on the offensive line, sometimes it shouldn't matter who's back there. They should be able to get a push against the Northwestern Indi- Indiana, against really anybody in the Big Ten. I mean, that's a that's a line full of four and five stars. They should be able to to get a push no matter what. And whether you know whether Mayan Williams can break it for a seventy yard touchdown, they should be able to get five yards of pop in my in my opinion. So. That's where if I'm watching Ohio State, I'm looking at them in the trenches, honestly, on both sides of the ball. But if you're looking at, at the run game, you know, on the offensive side of the ball, I, I'm wondering, you know, I, I think if for them to be that elite offense that we've seen from Ohio State year in and year out, they need to be able to run it. Everybody always talked about the passing game, but, you know, the, the years that Ohio State's been at their best, they've still been run first. They, they've been able to, to throw it over the top, no doubt, but they still had Zeke Elliott. They still had these guys that, that are just dominating and, and bur- you know, breaking those runs for, um, for you know, 40, 50 yards. So I, I, I would – I mean, if I was an Ohio State fan, and I think I've talked to many that are concerned about this, is, you know, if it's cold, if it's not perfect weather, and you have to rely on C.J. Stroud, now I would – I'm – sure that they're glad they have C.J. Stroud because it's pretty good to rely on him. But, you know, if, if Michigan doesn't have to worry about that run game as much, that makes it a much different game for Ohio State and their game plan on offense. Yeah, if you threw the ball 40 times and it's not, let's say, it's horrible weather, but the worse it gets outside, the more difficult it is. It's just not fun. It's not natural. It's not easy to throw a ball when it's wet. When it's cold, it's not easy to catch when it's cold or wet, or if there's some wind, it just makes it more difficult. It's much easier yep. to take football and give it to another dude that's right there. <laughs> <laughs> he takes off with it. Blake Corum, there you go. Uh, there's just a lot less involved in being run heavy versus pass heavy. And like I tell and, and you, I, I, I think to you, I think to your point, you know, it, it's, I, I, this is a narrative. I, I don't know how true it is, but CJ Stroud being that California kid, I just don't think he loves playing in this cold weather. I think he's super, you know, used to being warm weather and he's at his best at the earlier part of the season. But I, you know, I see him, I watch some, um, some of the body language of him and it's when it's cold and when he gets pressure and when he's on the ground, he is not comfortable, and it and it just feels like you know if you can get him out of his comfort zone, especially in cold weather, then that's a different CJ Stroud. Um, and, and to be honest with you, I actually think that is, you know, people are talking about that as Ohio State's like identity as well. Sometimes the body language that Northwestern game, they that body language did not look good, and they did not look like they wanted to be there. And I don't blame them. That's the worst weather possible. It's probably cold as hell, and they want to get out of there with a W and, and head back home. But, you know, it just feels like, you know, in, in years past, uh, Ohio State has had different body language when, 
uh, when things are going that way. And, and that's where I think Michigan kind of loves it. They embrace it a little bit. They're like, you know, let's, we're tougher, you know, whereas if you would have told me that in 2018, I didn't think Michigan was mentally tough. I think ever since this 2021 team and beyond, it really has, um, it really has been, a, you know, a mentally tough team and they love, you know, going on with, with, uh, with some cold weather and saying, Hey, we're going to be tougher than you. And, you know, we might not be more talented at all times, but uh, we'll be ready to go. I don't know how accurate uh, 10 day forecasts are, but I would think maybe, uh, you know, IP addresses coming from Columbus, Ohio to like weather.com might be crashing the, uh, the system, you know, over. <laughs> uh, so, Is it, can I, can I ask you that? Like, so I just talked about it. Do you buy in to a team being soft as a whole? You know, obviously we're talking about Ohio state here where people are saying, you know, well, they're not, they're, they're soft. They're not, you know, built for this type of thing. Do you buy into that, or is that just like fans talking because they see things on TV? Yeah, I think that there are teams, and when when you say soft, relatively speaking, like none of us are going out there taking right. on two hundred fifty pound linebackers, like soft relative to where they need to be, or soft compared to their opponent, compared to Michigan. Yeah, yeah I, I think that's a possibility. Absolutely, I think there are football teams that are more mentally tough resilient and physically tougher not just more talented just flat out tougher than other teams that and i and i think when you're pass heavy you can be tough and be pass heavy there are teams throughout nfl history who have been both yeah but i think it's difficult to build that culture you have to really drive it home that even though we throw the ball more than we run it we're still going to be a physical team and you have to figure out ways to do that, but it's just passing the football, uh, the offensive players, the offensive line, they're more passive. You backpedal. It's more of a finesse, just function in football than it is to pound people and run forward. Obviously the backs become more receivers and pass protectors, which is just about chipping and getting out in the flat and all of that. And then you count on receivers as, uh, as blockers more often in the run game and that toughens them up. I just think it can be done, but it's just more difficult. Yeah, I, I agree with you. Um, and I think just like there's sometimes to, you know, I, I keep referencing the, the Northwestern game and I know they, they beat the crap out of Indiana last week. And so they did, you know, they did bounce back. Cool. And did, it was pretty cold. Yeah, yeah. no, I, I agree. It was, yeah. it was, it was, um, so that, I think that probably helps Ohio state with, uh, like a little bit of a confidence thing. All right, we can do this. You know, if they would have struggled against Indiana too, then all of a sudden I think the doubt in your mind is like, all of a sudden you're, that starts eating at you a little bit. And that's where I think Ohio state seems a little more on that side to me at this point of the season. Whereas I think Michigan is at, one of the more confident times of all time in this program, at least in the last two decades where like, all right, we beat them last year. We're undefeated. We're on a roll. Like they, for the first time, it feels like they're on the offensive, right. In this, in this matchup, they're like, we're going into to Columbus and, you know, they may be underdogs again, probably. I would assume that's what it's going to be, but they they feel like, you know what, we're in this, we can do it. We did it last year. We can do it again. Michigan hasn't had that that mindset outside of maybe 2018 when they went on a 10 and 0 rampage after losing the first one and going into Columbus favored for the first time. Um, but it just feels different because you've beat that team and you've accomplished it. You know, so you you have that feeling of you know what it takes. You know what I mean? And I think it's also reasonable to think we talk about the weather, and I don't know that the weather has been brought up in this series as much as it has the last two years, but. Mm -hmm. The, the the weather throughout my life watching this game has been kind of like, oh, well, there's weather, but not really thinking, OK, it favors one team or the other. But now I think there's a definite advantage. And I got to think that most Michigan players probably just don't even look at the weather and think, hey, if we show up and it's nice out, that's fine. If we show up and it's 30 degrees and sleeting, that's fine, too. And <laughs> there are probably linebackers and defensive linemen and offensive linemen for Ohio state that have the same mentality, but 
I might be wrong, but I don't think it's a stretch to think that there would be players that'd be like, it's 58, it's sunny, it's <laughs> good versus, you know, it's, uh oh, okay, we got to do this, but I don't like it, but let's yeah. go. And it's funny, too. I was with a couple of the D linemen last night, um, actually talking to them and interviewing them on uh, Wolverine Plus, um, which is what we uh, our, our NIL platform for for compensating the players for their time. Um, so I'll, I'll plug that real quick. Go, go check out Wolverine dot plus. We have a whole we have a whole um, uh, lineup for we're going to do stuff every single day um, with the Colasars and the Wanglers and things like that going on to, to do Michigan, Ohio state as well. Um, so exciting stuff there, but talking to those guys and they're, they're both from, from Florida. They're both from South, from the South. And they're like, it's cold, but they, they, it's cold for them walking to class, but they actually talked about it. Like we, as a group, when we get on out of the practice field and they're out there, they're practicing in the, they're not practicing inside the, uh, the, you know, nice, glick field house that they have they're practicing outside it's different they're like we you know they they kind of shame people that start you know talking about the cold and stuff like that so i think it's different when you step out on the field and they're wearing it a little bit and they they kind of love that like you know they feel that they have an advantage when it's when it's that type of weather because they're you know they're gonna just gut through it it's a mindset it it is what you allow your mind to believe and and, and feel Brett Favre is one of the great cold weather quarterbacks in the history of the NFL. And he's from Southern Mississippi and never played in the snow in his life until he went to the NFL. Yep. So you can change. It can happen for sure. And it feels like they've adopted this. Um, I'm starting to get the Wolverine weather slogan out there, get, getting that going. Um, so, yeah, I, I think, you know, it'll be interesting. Ultimately, here's the thing. You can have as much mindset and all that stuff. You still got to go out and make plays. You know, you got to go out and make plays and you've got to have a game plan that's ready to go. You know, I think that's what we saw in 2018. Michigan had this mindset, right? And But then the defensive game plan was about as bad as it gets. And so that's where, you know, I think that, you know, we're in a different spot now with Jesse Minter where they, they adjust, they do a lot of things. And I think, you know, ultimately they're they're more ready to go out and make plays than I think than ever before. Great stuff as always from Justin Rowe, bluebuy90.com. Also the NIL uh, initiative there, wolverine.plus. Justin, we appreciate it. Uh, try to make it through this Illinois game and we will talk to you next week. Sounds good. Thanks, Mark.